This is my scrap pile. And these are two old pairs of trousers that I'm gonna turn into one new pair. The plan is to modify my trouser block into a jeans pattern, removing the darts and pleats and adding a yoke. I'll add style lines for double knee patches and develop a carpenter pocket and hammer loop. Details will include a zip fly, patch pockets and a button waistband. For materials, I have these two pairs of trousers. The black ones are boot cut. Where's the tag? They're a size 24 women's made by George. And they're a mixture of 98% cotton and 2% elastane. It's a nice kind of linen. It's got a bit of stretch to it. It's good stuff. I actually really like it. Also, just because of the sheer size of these, loads of materials to work with. And these will make the base of the actual trousers that I'm going to produce. I'm also going to try and salvage things like the, the patch pocket and the waistband, but the rest is all going to be modified, cut up, changed massively. On the other side of this, this is a moment of weakness. This is a pair of ASOS chinos. Same, same mix of cotton and elastine. Basically, I, I really needed new trousers. I wasn't really sewing yet, so I went and bought the cheapest pair I could find off of ASOS because I was skinned. And they arrived and they never fit. And the moment that I buttoned them up, all the buttons came off of the front fly here. Do you know what? It was a galvanizing experience because after this, I, I made the repairs to the, the Forever jeans. That's really what got me started on the channel. Yeah, this will make all the additional parts of the trousers, so the the knee patches, the hammer loop, the carpenter pockets. But the first task is to adapt my basic trouser block pattern. If you don't have a trouser block pattern and you want to follow along at home, you can watch my video, it's, it's pretty good. It'll tell you everything you need to know. Um, if you're not interested in following along, I would maybe skip to the sewing. I mark my chapters. You don't have to watch all of this, just, just watch the bits that you're interested in. First, I tackle the front pattern and trace my block onto fresh paper. I measure 30 millimeters in from the center front line and strike a line from where the center front rise intersects the hip line to this point. I measure down 15 millimeters on the grain line and original center front rise, line up my ruler on the marks and mark the point the ruler intersects the new center front rise. I then draft in a gentle curve from this point back to the side seam to create my new waistline. I can now add the style lines. I bring in the forever jeans for reference at this point, looking at the wear around the knees. I realize that I'm going to want the double knee to go all the way up to the hip line, but I don't want so much fabric bulk around the inside leg seam, so I end up changing direction on the grain line, picking a point just below the crotch line and striking an angle towards the side seam well below the complications of the crotch. I strike a line below the knee where I think the patch should end. Using the forever jeans for reference again, I draft in the shape of the pocket opening, the fly and the pocket bag. I add my standard seam allowance to the waist, side seam and pocket. My standard seam allowance is also added to the center front rise and the inseam, but these are for the flat felt seam. I go back and double my seam allowance on the center front rise, as one panel will need double while the other will just need single, and I want both of these seam allowances marked on the pattern. Oh, oh, hi there. Yeah, I'm just watching my, my flat felled seam video. Um, I just don't want to mess it up, and this, this film's quite good. It, if you don't know how to do flat felled seams, you, you, The back pattern is a bit more complicated and I mess up a bit along the way. I start by marking out the edge of my pattern up to the hip line. From where the hip line intersects the center back rise, I measure up 20 millimeter and mark a point. I then untape my pattern and pivot it slightly on the point where the hip line intersects with the side seam until the hip line is lined up with my new mark. I can then mark out the top of the pattern in this new position. I skipped the darts but I shouldn't have done that. But for now, I remove my original pattern and mark out the new one. We can now tackle the yoke. From the center back rise waist point, measure down 80mm. From the side seam waist point, measure down 30mm. Connecting these two points gives you your yoke line. From the side seam waist point, measure in 10mm. 
mark a point and join this point to the side seam with a flowing curve. This is the first in a set of steps that will take out the volume created by the dart. By now, I've realised my mistake and put the darts back in. I can now trace out the shape of the yoke, including the dart legs. Cut this out and cut on the dart legs. The middle is removed and this is taped together and traced again, adding slight curves to smooth out the join. The final adjustment is to take a further 8mm from the waistline and redraft the side seam. This takes out the last of the volume created by the dart. Again, I bring in the forever jeans and roughly mark in the position for the patch pockets. I finally add back in the grain line and realise that the pockets should line up with this, down a little from the yoke. Finally, awkwardly, using my boiler suit for reference, I draft in a shape for the carpenter pocket. Gonna take a wee break right here, mainly because I've I've run out of tracing paper, but also because the Blackfeld seams in the back are way more complicated. While I have you, some light internet begging, like, subscribe, all those sort of things. I don't know why my arms did that. The most useful thing you could do to help the channel, if you're so inclined, is to share the videos. You might have a sewing friend that you think, oh, they might enjoy this. Send it on to them. Whatever you do, it's greatly appreciated. If you don't do anything, that's also appreciated. Just, just keep watching. Even if like you're bored out of your mind, just, just leave it to play. Go get a cup of tea. I don't know. Just, just let it play through. Let's get back into it. I work out my seam allowances in my notebook and add them to the pattern. The yoke gets standard on the top and side, while the bottom gets double and the centre rise gets marked with both. The leg gets standard seam allowance on the side seam, single where it meets the yoke, both single and double on the centre rise and double on the inseam. I trace off patterns for the double knee, pocket bag and carpenter pocket. And finally, I have all the pattern pieces I need. Rather than batter into the final garment, I take the extra time to sew a toile as I've made significant modifications to the pattern and I want to make sure it fits. And... This has worked out. Yeah, there's a slight jodhpur flare around the thigh, but I actually appreciate the additional range and movement this gives. I messed up the stitching on the right leg, creating an unintentional twisted seam, but it's not there on the left so I'm happy enough to continue. Now I can cut the actual panels. And the black panels are only just big enough to fit the new pattern. I'm missing a sizeable chunk of seam allowance on the crotch of the back panels, but I'm hoping this will not be too much of a problem. The pocket opening on the black is much deeper than I had anticipated. I decide to use it as is. I bring in my pocket pattern to help me trim it to size on the waist but I'll need a new pattern for the pocket bag that will be much deeper. I'll also have to cut a contrasting bearer as I have no usable offcuts from the black. It's the same with the yoke, which gets cut from the grey. However, with the patches and the carpenter pocket cut, I still have a whole leg panel of grey as backup. I can now pre-assemble each of the panels. I start with the carpenter pocket, which is a nice sort of freehand sewing. I press the open edge over and top stitch them in place. I then press the edges that won't be sewn into the side seam. Trim the excess on the corners, then line the two panels up on the leg and pin it in place before I sew it down. I'm really happy with the top stitching but I could have gone closer to the edge. Wrapping the allowance of the front pocket around the main pocket may have been cleaner but I'm not going to unpick this. To finish off this panel, I cut new patch pockets. Press and top stitch the open edge before preparing the other three edges. I lay this out and realise that I'm losing the effect of the carpenter pocket and decide to fold back the outside corner. I trim the new shape, press and pin in place for top stitching. I've gone much closer to the edge with my stitching here and will use this approach across the rest of the project. I think this stacked pocket looks more interesting than whatever I might have come up with to cover the hole from removing the rivet. I now turn to the front panels and prepare the double knee. This is pinned in place and I run the inner top stitch on the top and bottom, before edge stitching around the four sides. The final thing I do is run five lines of decorative top stitch parallel to the angled section of the knee. For the hammer loop, I fold over a long section of the grey. 
mark an excessive width and cut to shape. This is joined, turned out and pressed, centering the seam. I also add a matching angle to the patch pocket. I lay out the other leg, line up the patch and the hammer loop and press the loop to match the carpenter pocket. I then lay out the other leg, flipping it over and pin everything in place. This is top stitched and I trim off the excess loop. And here's the uh, the prepared panels. I'm not going to get too excited because like this was the easy bit. Construction is good to uh, destroy these. This is the carpenter pocket and I'm I'm very happy with this. Look at that. This this little improv worked out beautifully. I didn't quite get the points to match up, but who cares? As for mass manufactured sewing, this is home sew. Here's how it looks on the hammer loop. This is pretty good. This was in no way planned. The fact that this just about matches up with this, I uh, just blind luck on my part. The strap is a little bit too chunky and a little bit too short to be functional. I think, I don't know, we'll find out when I put a hammer in it. Last thing to show off is this beautiful double knee. I am I'm very, very pleased with myself with this. I really like the shape. I think this is going to look really cool when you've got the two of them lined up together. The top stitching is a nice addition. I could have run it all the way down to the to the inside corner, but I think stopping here is good because I, it would have taken a lot of time, but also like there's no guarantee that I would have kept stitching in straight lines. Probably the thing that we do need to talk about is the missing pocket bearers. I've run out of fabric. I've got a big pile of scraps, but that means that I'm gonna have to do some patchwork, I think. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do, but considering that that's the next thing that I am going to do in this film, you can find out now. After careful consideration, I decide to use the original pockets from the black, but to avoid any tricky work on the machine, I hand sew these into place. I could now tackle the first flat felt seam, joining the yoke and leg panel. As I've said, my film is really helpful at this stage, but in the end, I puckered the join a little, but I'm not in the mood to unpick. I do a much better job on the other one and can tackle the biggest unknown of this project, the zip fly. I'm not going to go into detail on this because it was late and I had no idea what I was doing, but after two hours, I had a working fly and no idea what had happened in Lawnmower Man. I woke up to find that I'd added the flat felled seam to the back panel and only had the inside and outside leg seams to go. One last bit of prep work. I had ripped the fabric a little when deconstructing, so strengthened those areas with some heavy bar tacks. It was the usual process for the last flat felled seam. I marked out the full point on the back panel, snipped on the curve for some easing, pressed over the fold, with right sides together, pinned the front panels under the folded edge, edge stitch to join, pressed to conceal the raw edge, then ran two lines of top stitching to close the seam. The outside edges were lined up, pinned and joined with a straight stitch, and I had a pair of trousers I could try on, and somehow they had grown a lot. I think it's from when I added in the pocket, so I take the easy way out and figure out how much excess there is on the waist and take it out with a straight stitch on each of the side seams. I trim off the excess and secure the raw edges with a zigzag stitch. A quick fit later and I'm happy to proceed to the finishing touches. I take the belt loops off the waistband, mark a point for a new buttonhole, do a terrible job of sewing that, pin the waistband in place and once sewn in, position the belt loops tack them on, hand sew on the button and hem the cuffs and this is the final garment. These are the best things I have sewn. After a quick wash these went straight on and they won't come off until I get the forever jeans fixed up. I love the baggy fit, low crotch and to me the grey details are exquisite. Sure, I look like I'm cosplaying as a workie, but that's the reality of choosing workwear as a staple in your wardrobe. Best of all, there isn't a single fault. Nowhere. Not one. Nope. No. Stop. Stop. We don't have to show this. As you can probably tell, I'm very happy with these trousers. This has been a, a long process. Initially learning how to draft a trouser block, to then like fitting that trouser block, making sure it worked 
to the point where I modified it to make this this jeans pattern, this this pattern that I will use for a lot of different purposes. There's probably some fit issues around the hips, but they're really like, it just doesn't bother me. If I get to the point where I'm gonna try and make a nice pair of chinos, then I'll probably spend a bit more time with the fit to try and get it a bit cleaner. But for this purpose, for these like workwear, rough and ready trousers, like I feel really, really comfortable in them. Again, I would say that this material, this elastine cotton blend, fantastic material for a pair of trousers. Obviously not the most high end, but just, just really delivering and forgiving a lot of my mistakes along the way. In terms of faults, the one thing that's kind of proven to be a problem is the pockets, the front pockets. Women's pockets are useless. Like, I I mean, I knew, I knew that that was an issue, but oh my God, these ones are just like, they don't fit anything. I can't, can't get a phone in there. I can't get my pipe in there. Not, nothing, nothing fits. The big fault on the pockets was that they're slightly misaligned. Like one pocket is deeper than the other. Maybe I'll just, I'll just stand up and show you because it'll be easier than filming another thing. So like, as you can see, the, uh, the right pocket is much deeper than the left pocket. So if I put that there, you get a better idea. Sorry, I don't I talk to you while you're just looking at my crotch. So I probably would have been better serviced by like actually doing the work and remaking them. But I really didn't have any materials left. And I think that's something important about this kind of approach to making clothes. The black trousers were pretty big, but still they were like, it was a tight fit to get all of the, the panels out of the original pre-cut panels. So I think for anybody that's maybe a bit larger than me, you're really going to be wanting to look for like a much, much, much bigger pair of trousers, which is going to be really hard to find. That stuff's not easy to get. If you want to use existing garments to make new garments, you might be looking at more of a sort of patchwork approach where you gather up some materials, patch them together to make bigger panels that, that you can then cut the panel off of. I would still recommend starting with trouser panels because patchworking a couple of legs of a pair of trousers together to make a bigger panel that you can cut from is actually pretty straightforward. It's almost a straight line. I don't think I've got anything else to, oh, and like the coherence, right. Okay, so what's starting to become apparent is that all the clothes that I'm making seem to have a certain design language in common. There's things that are happening. When I was wearing the deviation jacket with these, there was this sort of crotch box that came with it. That just like where it sort of, anyway, but that was funny. And same with this, I'll stand up again and show you my crotch. But you know, I've still got, I've got this same step in happening. All of these pieces that I'm making are kind of coherent with each other. And that's quite exciting. It means that what I'm doing is intentional. There's a larger narrative to the, the clothes that I'm making. If you are going to try this process, come at me in the comments. I'd be really happy to like offer any insights that I have, but I would say do it. You don't have to like make things the way that I've made. Like there are so many options with these knee panels. You can take them in whatever direction you want to take them in. Just because I've gone for this like angular sci-fi future punk thing, like you could have curves on this, you could have feathers, you could, whatever you need to do to make it yours, do it. And I hope like watching these videos gives you the confidence to just like take a risk with these kind of projects. That was a lot of information. This is already a very long video. Thank you so much for watching. It is greatly appreciated. I've had a great time making these, apart from the bits where I really wasn't having fun. And I hope to see you in the next film. Oh, what's the next film you may ask? Forever Jeans? Gotta get those done. Now that I've got all of this work out of the way, I can finally tackle the, the Forever Jeans, which are sitting over there demanding to be worked on. Halloween's coming up. I've got a Halloween project from a kid. It could go so badly, but I'm, I'm super excited for it. Then I'm kind of winding everything down a bit for Christmas. I'm gonna try and do some lighter projects, but I do have one, one big hefty thing that will hopefully fix some of the lighting issues when I'm doing these pieces to camera. Support the channel, like, subscribe, leave a comment, all those things, it's hugely useful. I think that's it, that's it. I think I'll just uh, leave you some shots of the garden. What's, uh, I don't know what's in flower at the moment. I haven't filmed that yet. Thank you, thank you. Right, I'm gone, I'm gone, bye, bye.